correct. Welcome back, everyone, to another round of Minecraft modded. The bots fueled Sweetberry Farm is not really producing a lot. It really isn't. It's, it's not doing great. And I mean, it's honestly so much better if I was just collecting it on my own. But again, the whole point of that is I don't have to worry about it. So I didn't forget it. So I want to do the next farm up today. And I've done a melon pumpkin farm in the past before the observer block was an option in the game. And so I really want to build something now using the observer. And it also is going to be something I'm going to put right in this area. So I might be having to take this out because of building this. If not, I'm going to see if I can leave it long enough that I just build behind it and still use this for a little while until I'm ready to move them. But if not, we may be taking the farmers out today. So one element of what I'm wanting to do up here is I want to have a centralized chain of hoppers that go basically along the entire front of the structure here. So as it goes further along the wall there, it's all one chain of hoppers that feeds back to here. And basically just every single production thing above the stables and well this area too all ties in somewhere to this hopper chain so it just feeds along goes into there and goes down to that giving me a central repository for all the different things i am bringing in through these farms here so the design i've been testing out because i want to update my approach to the melon and pumpkin farm and use something that is more current as opposed to the method I've used in the past, I'm going to be using the detector. And basically this is changing my previous approach of being a sideways push with a piston to being a top down push with a piston. So the idea is the detector sitting here detecting this when it's connected to the block there, it triggers. It's got a bit of redstone dust on top, goes to the piston, piston causes it to pop and you have melon or pumpkin sitting there on top of the dirt block so to get collection on that, of course, I'm going to be using a hopper minecart. And whereas the Fox farm, I used a method of stop and go the same as I used with the bamboo sugarcane test I did. In this case, I don't want to do that, mainly because of keeping things as space efficient as possible and trying to get as much out of it as I can. So instead, I'm just going to create one big circuit. And thanks to having so much redstone dust available and easy to get through trades, I'm actually going to need a different approach to power the rails this time. And I think that is going to end up being the use of redstone blocks. Yes, it's more expensive than a redstone torch, but it will work a little bit better for my design that I have in mind. Well, now here's a problem. I have the right number of spacing for everything because of water placement and everything. Because the same thing with this, I need water in the middlemost block of a 9x9. But it's not going to work on that. I'm going to go this way, come back around, and then it's going to go up here and need to go that way. Oh, yeah. All right. So. Uh, it's gonna be a problem. Okay, there we go. So instead of the nine by nine that I normally would need to do, I'm gonna do a an eight by eight or an eight by nine, rather nine that way, but still eight this way. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically, at some point, I'm going to fill it in on the outside. And even though this is meant to be a divider, I'm going to put a water block on each edge so that it will cover watering all the plants in the appropriate race so will be half one side half the other side covered and what i'm going to do instead i think should simplify things is i should be able to take this and put it down and no okay i'm going to have to have a block on each of those i thought it would carry over to the adjacent blocks but apparently it won't so all these will be powered. So basically as it passes along, it will get powered here, here, all the way along. Just keeps going all the way around, loop around here. So hopefully that should be enough power here to push it all the way to barely reach that point. 
If not, then I'll I'll have an issue, but I might be able to do a powered rail somewhere along here a little differently and make it still work. This is definitely turning out to be a little bit more complicated than I thought, and now I need three more of these, which means I think I get it's here five or six per set that I build, so I just need I think it's five more bars of gold, so not too much from some pigmen. It's not a gold farm, but it is usable for now to just sit here and do this. Eventually, I'll build some kind of pigmen farm. But I just I don't have enough need for gold consistently right now to worry about it. The one nice touch of having the Corel Recycler mod with fighting pigmen or just farming pigmen is, of course, the gold sores that are going to drop and the ability to turn those into gold nuggets as well. And there we go, finally. All right, so with that done, I put them here and go boom, like that. Let's see how well this runs. Make sure it doesn't run out of steam coming around the corner. No, just enough to keep going. All right, so that's working. All right, there we go. So that has all of it lit up sufficiently where no spiders should be spawning here. That's really the only concern. You don't want to come in here and find a spider has spawned in. And while it'll be easy to go ahead and start do it, well, I'll do part of it. So basically I'm going to have all of this done. And originally I would have had the middle of it be where the water block was. Uh, but because of the lineup and trying to maximize it, it really is just going to be better to do like to the side a little bit. I'll just have like a little pocket somewhere that has a water block showing on it and that, that'd be fine. All right, Mr. Farmer, I see you're not doing any work. I'm working way harder than you are right now. You know, the catch is, unless they've changed it, it used to be... You didn't actually have to have water to till the land. It would just, it had a chance of reverting back if you didn't have water nearby. But in this case, I could technically possibly get away with that because once you plant the seed, it shouldn't break it. I'm gonna try doing it without water. It might actually be okay. I'm not even going to worry about possibly having problems with this because once I get it set up, it's gonna be such a pain to get back in that yeah i'm just gonna go ahead and put that water block there and that's going to be the same way over here and now i'm thinking to make sure i maintain proper light level up here as well i probably should put uh, a couple of glowstone blocks in might as well do one there and that way i'll have it above the water spot because i want to make sure i mean it shouldn't be a problem, but I'd rather be safe, you know, than sorry. Because I really don't want any spiders spawning in here. That should work okay because of light from outside. Uh, if not, actually, I might just do... Like, if I do one here. That's two. That put one there as well. That should work on keeping this lit up well enough so doing yeah like right here and doing one right here that should work and so let's go ahead and what i'm gonna do is basically i'm going to till this area and the only reason i'm doing the track under every block is because with this method the melon slices the pumpkins could pop and land on one of these could pop over there in the past the method i used which required a lot of slime blocks was susceptible to that but not very susceptible it was like a very low risk rate of it actually dropping on the wrong block so it worked pretty well but for this i don't have that option so i'm gonna go ahead and do that and you know i was really hoping i could avoid having to climb up above so maybe i can make this work so standing above we're gonna put the observer oh hit, there we go all right so the observer goes there the redstone goes on top like that 
and this should still work. I'm not sure if it's going to work when I chain it all together like this, but then the idea being, bam, oh, <laughs> not bam. That was not bam. Th this is, oh wait, that's right. I'm, I'm facing the wrong way. I need it to be uh, right there. Ba uh, uh, bam, there we go. All right, so when that gets full grown, it triggers the piston, the piston pops, and that mine cart with the hopper goes around and picks up the stuff. That's pretty much all it is. So there we go, one side completed. I'm just gonna put some torches up here for now on top of the pistons. And that basically is it, it's go. Yo, know, one of these grows to full height, it triggers a pumpkin to produce and the piston pops it, collects it. So let's go grab some bone meal and make sure it's working before I go any further. Oh, we already got a pumpkin and it spawned in immediately as soon as I placed down that one. So that may have been a failed trigger. Same as that, it placed down immediately instead of it changing on its own. So I'm hoping that that's where the problem's at. If not, then I'm gonna have to redo this. Well, as bad as it worked when it was just a single piece and it's not going to work now as a full setup, something else is going on. So yeah, the basic premise, this should work. I'm gonna give it a few minutes. Let's see if it gets anything. So while it worked, perfectly in my test elsewhere with single piece right there. It's not going to work with them mounted up this way, like side by side or anything. So I don't know what's going on here, but that should be working because it worked for me back over there with just a single melon. It popped that melon, no problems. Several times I would come back and find slices, you know, auto collected in my inventory. It's just not working now. So yeah, I'm gonna have to toy around with this a bit more. For some reason, it just doesn't want to work in a group connection configuration as opposed to just working the rest of the way. I might have to redo this instead of doing rows like this. I might have to stagger these a bit. So the redstone separated or something. But yeah, I'm gonna have to do some more testing with it. So for now, that's it for this episode. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button. If you have suggestions, leave them in the comment below. But I think I have an idea of what might be breaking it. And of course, hit subscribe if you haven't done so already. As always, I'm your host, Mr. Spicy. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to keep it spicy this week, and I'll see you in the next video.